Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones and welcome to this edition of the program, The Platform. On this program, we examine the national issues of the Bahamas and uh, there are many issues that we can talk about. But today on our program, we want to talk about an ultimatum given to illegal migrants in the Bahamas by Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis. Dr. Minnis says that they must leave by the 31st of December this year or they would face arrest and deportation. Well, Rights Bahamas, headed by attorney Fred Smith, who is a Queen's Counsel, uh, has put out a press release about this matter. Indeed, he has been on Radio Love 97 FM talking about it, and there are a good number of people who are concerned about this ultimatum of the Prime Minister. We have invited Mr. Smith here today on our program to further discuss this matter, and it's a pleasure to have Fred Smith as our guest today. Welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. Always a pleasure to be here. Good to see you as usual. You are wearing your legal garb, and so it means that you are uh, fresh from court. You eh? just, uh, I just dashed over yes. uh, to spend a little time with you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Um, this uh, matter is uh, creating some consternation, uh, particularly among illegal migrants in the Bahamas. Uh, there are a good number of Bahamians who support Dr. Minnis' position and uh, say that, you know, it's about time uh, they are given an, an ultimatum. What do you say? Well, Mr. Jones, the challenge that we face is in deciding what are illegal migrants. Mm -hmm. And that has always been the problem we face in the Bahamas, who is or who isn't illegal. Now, obviously, uh, people who arrive on a boat and didn't get permission to arrive, immigration pick them up, they take them to the detention center, and they must immediately deport them. That's perfectly acceptable. And I take no issue with the prime minister um, saying that. The issue, however, is because uh, uh, there has been a practice implemented um, viciously by Fred Mitchell, minister of immigration, back since November 2014 of conducting indiscriminate raids, roadblocks, roundups, uh, home invasions, and then detentions, and then processing people at the detention center, and detaining some of them for years at a time, and eventually deporting some. Yeah, this has been going on before Fred Mitchell, though. No, but... Uh, successive but we, ministers have been doing it. But uh, many, most of... No, 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 there was never a policy implemented by the government that people traveling around the Bahamas exercising their freedom of movement should have a passport on them or papers or documentation proving status. There is no offense known to the law of not having a passport, of not, being, not having papers to prove that I'm a Bahamian. In fact, I don't have any papers on me to prove I'm Bahamian. In fact, I never got a certificate of citizenship even though I was born in Haiti. Mm. I, I, I just am a Bahamian as a result of the provisions of the Constitution, as are you. You don't have a certificate of citizenship. Now, you might have a license, you might have a passport. Mm. All these are, are, are insignia of it. But the challenge with this uh, Christmas uh, sort of the, uh, ultimatum is that those who are here illegally, I they've overstayed, or they don't have a work permit, or they came in without permission. They don't, they don't, those are people who don't have papers. So giving them an ultimatum to leave voluntarily by December 31st or face aggressive enforcement is a bit nonsensical. All that does is cause panic, and it in fact promotes those categories of people to find a boat to try and smuggle out. This is promoting human trafficking. Because, as uh, Minister Simonet emphasized, and as Minister or Senator Mitchell um, took it to task on, on Friday, there is no amnesty. So, given that the Immigration Department also has, has this policy, although it's not law, of not considering first time applications if you're already in the country, and if you're illegally in the country, requiring you to leave before they consider your application. These people have, uh, who are in a panic, the Ill alleged illegals, 
have nothing else to do but try and find someone to smuggle them abroad because they don't have papers. What do you mean alleged illegals? Well, you are either here illegally or you are not. Well, what about... You are either legal what, what or you are illegal. About, what about uh, children born in the Bahamas for the last 20, 30 years of foreign parents? What about people who are waiting for their permanent residency applications uh, to be considered? What about people who have entered legally and are waiting for their work permits to be considered? What, what about the spouses of Bahamians, men and women, waiting for their per, uh, spousal permits to be considered? This is the problem. Because of the policy implemented in 2014, November 2014, these indiscriminate raids just pick up anybody you know, at the, at the, you know, on the bus stops, at, at, the, at the traffic lights, uh, at their homes, and take them to the detention center. So the law, the law presumes everyone to be innocent until proven guilty. A, that's why I always say alleged, because Minister Roker and uh, Minister Loftus Roker, let me take my hat off to you. Um, I criticized you back in the uh, mid-'80s for the way you were executing the uh, immigration policy. But you and the Attorney General, then Attorney General Mr. Adderley, under Sir Lyndon's administration, had the decency and respect for the rule of law. Every time they arrested somebody, they took them before a court and they charged them either with overstaying or with landing illegally or with working without a permit. And, the, and so most of the other people, all these thousands of other people who uh, have been caught in these recent immigration dragnets were never subjected to arbitrary searches, detentions, and seizure. There's a provision in the Constitution that I'd like to emphasize, mm. and I, I thought to bring it, and it's Article 19 of the Constitution. And it says that no person shall be deprived of his personal liberty, save as may be provided by law. That is, protection from arbitrary arrest or detention. And that is the big complaint which our, the, the, the uh, human rights organizations make against FNM and PLP administrations. It is the continued, indiscriminate, general raid, arbitrary arrest and detention, and never taking someone before a court. The Constitution also says that as soon as the person is arrested or detained, they shall be taken as soon as reasonably practicable, and the Criminal Procedure Code says no less than uh, 48 hours, before a court of law, so that his arrest or his detention shall be determined by the court of law whether it is legal or not. And the court then decides if the person is charged, whether they should get bail or not. But there's a process. So in, the, in respect, so this ultimatum, this Christmas ultimatum, in respect of all of those who are allegedly here illegal, or let's just say they're here illegally, they're not going to be taken before a court of law. They can't leave in the meantime. So they're going to be hunted down and put in the detention center. Far more sensible would be for the government to, to exercise some reason here, declare an amnesty, and say, come in, and we will voluntarily, or we will help you to get out, or we'll consider an application. But they've, they've been put in an untenable, untenable position. Uh, and in respect of all the other people that are now subject to these raids, that is, people born here, they are subject to these mass arrests and detentions, and yet thousands of them have their applications already before the board. Uh, so in respect of that, I say to Minister Simonette and the Prime Minister, far more sensible to process the applications first and prosecute later, perhaps. But you can't be threatening to have these continued aggressive arrests and uh, detentions when people have thousands of applications to be considered. Because what does it do? So for the first category, it promotes this, this manifesto, the Minist Manifesto, I call it, the Minist Christmas Manifesto, <laughs> promotes for the illegal ones human trafficking. For the ones that have been born in the Bahamas, it promotes corruption. Because the immigration department, never having to take anybody before a court of law, they have their own processes at the detention center. They decide whether they're going to release Wendell Jones or not. And some of these people have been caught two, three, four, five times in these dragnets over the years. And the going rate is 2,000 to 2,500 to get released from the detention center. So Wendell Jones 
who is waiting for his citizenship application to be considered, may have been caught up two or three times. He's paid a few thousand dollars each time to get released. And so, although Minis and his government are now saying we're going to fight corruption, this is going to have the counterproductive effect of actually encouraging corruption to happen in the immigration department because they become a, a law unto themselves. There's no scrutiny by the courts. They don't get taken before a court. They don't get charged. No judge decides whether they should get bail or not. There's no trial. Uh, there's no sentencing. There's no conviction. They can languish, and I'm doing about 17 or 18 cases now, of people who've been in that detention center for up to nine years at a time. Three to nine years. Nine, nine years. years. Nine years. I'll send you the, the writs. All right? Arrested. Don't have papers, so the government doesn't know what to do with them. They just so, sit there. So where, where are they now? Uh, I have, there are seven of them that I'm doing right now who are still at the detention center. We've got habeas corpus writs that have been issued for them. The, the new, the new uh, uh, technique is every time Fred Smith issues a habeas corpus writ, they just let him out on the street, even though they've been there for years. Because they've committed no offense. It is not an offense known to law to be without status or to be without papers. This is a, a fantasy, a heresy created by Fred Mitchell. There is no law against being in the Bahamas illegally? No, that's not what I said. Of course, the Immigration Act says if you land here illegally, mm -hmm. sorry, without a permit, that's an offense. Right. If you overstay a permit, that's an offense. Yes. If you work without a permit, that's an offense. So fine, if you find people in that category, charge them in the courts, have them convicted and sentenced. Now, people born in the Bahamas haven't committed the offense of arriving illegally. They haven't, they're not, they're, they are, I call them citizens in waiting. There are thousands and thousands of these people in this, and the Prime Minister recognized them, and, and Minister Simonet did, in this no man's land in the meantime. Yeah, but the Prime Minister never said that these people are not going to be, no, 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 not, no, no. not going before the courts. You what know. The he said that they are going to be arrested. No. And, and the assumption Minister is... Minister Simonet mm -hmm. said, I think yesterday or Saturday, uh, on a radio program, there's no sense in taking them before the courts. We may as well just detain them and deport them. Well, I'm shocked that Minister Simonet, as a lawyer, if that's, exact, if that's what he said, said that. But all the Prime Minister and Simonet said is we're going to continue the policy of these ra arrests, roundups, detentions, and deportations. Aggressively, I might add. They used the, words aggressi the word aggressively. So on Friday, Minister, Senator Mitchell reminded the government, and it was not denied by the government, that the policy is that people traveling around the Bahamas must have their passports on them in order that they can show who they are and whether they are legally or not. Well, there's no law which requires, see, he who alleges must prove. If the immigration department say that I'm here illegally, they can arrest me and take me before a court. And the Immigration Act provides, it changes the burden of proof. It says that if you're arrested and uh, you're charged with illegal landing, the burden is on you to, pr pr to produce the permit to be here uh, uh, legally. Mm. If you don't have it, then you can get convicted. But if I'm a Bahamian, if I was born here, and I'm a Bahamian, I'm born here, uh, there's no offense of being born here and not having some kind of status paper. It doesn't exist. This is Mitchell's heresy. Yeah, but there are many people who are born here yes. who are not Bahamian, as you know. Many people born in the Bahamas. No, every person born before 1973 in the Bahamas was a British subject. A British subject. And is entitled to be registered as a citizen, and there are thousands of those applications still pending. But there are Number many, there are many wait, people wait, who weren't the, British subjects uh, who are here in the Bahamas uh, who did not get citizenship. Born in the Bahamas and born to, say, Haitian parents. Yes. Yes? Uh, did not get citizenship. But they have their applications for the most part being still applications being considered. All I'm saying is... If so you are saying that once your application is being considered, you ought to be allowed to stay? Well, you, no, not necessarily. If you have recently arrived and your permit has expired, then you have an obligation to leave. It's just like you go to the States, your visa expires, you can't just hang around. Right. But I was going to the next category of people. 
people born in the Bahamas and since 1973, those are the ones that are being ca caught in these dragnets, these roundups for the most part. Not the ones that come off the boat recently and they're just taken straight to the, uh, the detention center. As I said, the Immigration Act itself says you don't even have to take them before a court. Persons that are brought, that come in and are not given permission to land, have to be, they can be deported without the process of, of court. But the Chief Justice, Justice um, Hartman Longley, has said repeatedly in judgments that deten arbitrary detention, detention pending deportation, is illegal. If you arrive by boat or if you arrive by plane, the obligation of the government is to t take it and put you right back out, take you right back out. Now, you can hold people for a couple of days while you make arrangements to remove them, but not to hold them indefinitely and not to create this parallel non-legal system of processing by immigration where they are an entire law unto themselves. Let's say I'm a, a Haitian national who came to the Bahamas, uh, Fred Smith, um, in 1985, mm -hmm. um, I just overstayed my time, or I came by boat, well, I came illegally, uh, 1985. In which I, event? I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm still here. In which event? I, I do not have uh, any... You don't have to go on. I, if, if, if that person is found working, he can be charged with overstaying, or he can be charged with not having had a permit to land, or he can be charged with working without a permit. I mean, no one is, I am not. No, you are suggesting because you were here a long period of time no. that you should not be summarily no, no, uh, no, no, no. arrested and, and detained? No, no, no. If you have overstayed, you've committed an offense. If you are working without a permit, you've committed an offense. If you uh, have landed without a permit, you've committed an offense. And the immigration department is perfectly entitled to arrest you, but not just go and detain you and deport you. They have to take you before a court of law because there's a presumption of innocence, charge you, you have your trial, and you either have a defense or not. But you are saying that there's a difference between that person who came here illegally uh, in 85, the boat landed at South Beach in 1985, you evaded immigration authorities, no, I don't, I don't. No, no, you, you melted in the population, you were here since 1985. Nobody found you. Yes. You were saying that he is different from the person who came by boat and was immediately apprehended. No. I, oh, yes, different in this way. If you are found here, you must be charged with the offense. If, however, the boat arrives and you're right there and you're receiving all these people, or they come by plane and you don't have to give them a permit to enter, or if they come by boat, uh, 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 you know, normally, and you're not giving them permission to enter, they must leave. And you don't have to take them before a court. You can, at the border, prevent their entry or arrest them, detain them for a very short period, and deport them. That's allowed by law. But an ordinary person who has not presented himself at the border, who uh, is here without a permit, apparently, who is suspected of having come in 1985 or 1995, whatever, has to be taken before a court of law. You, you, can't, you can't assume guilt. That's okay. all. That's Let's, all I'm saying. Let's take a break. Uh, this is The Platform and uh, Fred Smith, QC, our guest on the program today. Mm -hmm.